Well, the big chill has enveloped all areas of Scotland this weekend, but it's with fevered anticipation that we await a fixture frequently red-hot when it comes to excitement and entertainment. For Hearts today, Christian Nade isn't fit enough to start. He hasn't been able to train for most of the week, so there's an opportunity for 20-year-old David Templeton. He comes in for his first appearance of the season. 17-year-old Scott Robinson keeps his place in attack. Well, it's a very young heart side, especially if you look at the pairing down the right in Templeton and Thompson, who is very highly thought of around here. Then you've got Molin, 17-year-old Robinson, as you said, Derek. So that is a, a, a very young quartet in there, but lots of experience in other parts of the team with Bouzid and Kinsawas and Wallace. Pal as well is not normally playing out in the left, but a big afternoon, I think, and the lads have touched on it for Michael Stewart. He has to show a bit of discipline. He has to lead by example. It is a vote of confidence for the 11 who started for Celtic at Motherwell last weekend in the 3-2 victory. Despite scoring three goals in two games, Marc-Antoine Fortuné cannot get into the side today. Tony Mowbray preferring Scott McDonald and Giorgio Samaras. Well, it's arguably the strongest team Tony Mowbray can put out at this particular moment in time. If, if you think that Leuven's is front of McManus and Samaras is in front of Fortuny, then that's up for debate. But we injuries got to, to Brown and, and Maloney and one or two other players, then this is his most experienced side. They are in the goals, I'll give you that, there's no doubt about that. They are starting to play a little bit better, but the question mark is still there defensively, and can Hearts exploit that? Michael Stewart, the Hearts captain in the final season of his contract. Both Hearts and Celtic will hope to lay down a pre-Christmas marker with the remainder of the busy festive period in mind. Hearts and their long-suffering supporters could do with a serving of Christmas cheer. 85 days have gone by since last they recorded a home win. The men in Maroon have scored a paltry five goals in their seven league games at Tynecastle. But the knowledge that they possess the wherewithal to defeat Celtic less than two months ago in the Cooperative Insurance Cup means their capital club can go into this meeting undaunted. There's a local boy, Scott Robinson. Made his first start of the season last week against Dundee United in the nil-nil draw. Today's referee is Willie Collum. For Celtic, the once elusive cutting edge has clearly returned, as evidenced by their impressive haul of 14 goals in the last five games. And today they will try for a fourth successive victory in the Clydesdale back Premier League. Shabal Aslo, Mark's boss, just shaking hands with Mark Venus and Peter Grant, two of the Celtic assistants. Tony Mowbray back in the city where he cut his managerial teeth as Severnian manager. And for those of us who were around in 1986, this hard Celtic tussle evokes memories of the title run in that year. They didn't face each other in the decisive match 23 years ago. But it was Albert Kidd's indelible late contribution for Dundee against Hearts that handed Celtic the crown. First free kick of the game. Uh, good early start there, young Templeton was really sharp in and really pressurised and, and made the challenge. And young Robinson was sniffing about edge of the box, the ball was just a bit too far. I think it was Jamie Moll that played it, but he was upended and had well, a chance to stick a good free kick in. And it's 18 year old Craig Thompson with it for Hearts. Coming off the head of Andreas Hinkle. Edith McGeady trying to clear his lines. Swept in there by Gonzalez. And Johnson has had it nicked away by Mark Crossess. And we have every reason to expect that Hearts will be up for the fight. Not Barry Robson. Right in front of referee Willie Collum. Going in on Johnson. I think Hearts will try and make it this type of game where they'll be snapping and snarling at Celtic, which they have done in the first minute and 20 seconds. And a late challenge from, from Barry Robson and just a word from Willie Collin, which I, I think is a sensible thing to do so early. But I think generally the games between these two uh, can be quite tenacious. And certainly if you're in the position Hearts have got to make it that way. 
Greg Thompson again for the home side. And infringement was spotted. Ismail Buzi as the transgressor. He's back from suspension, the Algerian. As a result of a red card he picked up at Hamilton a fortnight ago. And by Lee Wallace for Hearts. Peter Bikini playing on the right hand side for Celtic. Expect to hear a few boos from Bikini when he touches the ball. There's a comments he made to the newspapers just a day or so ago. Winding up the Hearts fans. the long throw specialist Jose Gonzalez so an excellent season at the back for Hart of Midlothian almost three minutes gone early thoughts Greg well uh, you know Hearts will try and pressurise they've got to get in the face of Celtic the, in terms of quality they're not as good that's that's not I don't think that's in doubt so you know, they've got to make it very very difficult and be snarling around and that's how they've started Robinson's pass, looking for Jamie Mole. And Glenn Lubens was alert. Lubens has played just once for the Netherlands. That was in the recent friendly against Japan. Julian Kello in goal for Hearts. Saved a penalty last week against Dundee United. That spot kick taken by Danny Karamatari. Fighting call for everyone to deal with here in the capital. Samaras. Picked on by Scott McDonald. Outside flag had gone up. As the run was made by Moore. He's looked quite sharp actually the start of the game. Well, he has a beautiful view, isn't it? Out towards Arthur's seat. December day. What's it called? Arthur's Seat. Is it? Have you been up to the top of Arthur's Seat then? Probably not. No. <laughs> you go off your seat to the top of it. <laughs> it's not a day for going up there, I can tell you. Is it ever? Here's McGeady. Now Hinkle. And the corner is awarded. Good battle today, McGeady, Wallace. Two quick players, very tricky. Transfer window coming up. Any any bids from down south? We shall see. Certainly one player I would imagine they'd want to hold on to. There would be quite a few they would want bids for. I wouldn't imagine McGeady would be one of them. Now, but it comes from Robson. Right, they had work to do. Marion Kello slightly by surprise. It's Danny Fox on the left hand side this time for Celtic. Robson. Greg Thompson confidently in. Sixteenth appearance for Thompson this season. Teenager at right back for Hearts. Robson. Might be a bit of concern about that goal mouth area. The referee and his assistants were having a close look at it earlier on. So considering the weather we've had, Craig, the pitch is a good name. It is, I've not actually been down on it, it was just it froze over a little bit, and it certainly looked out, it was getting a bit white, but it, it, it seems okay. I don't think there's been any concerns. Willie Collum had a good look uh, before kickoff. One or two little areas, but 
you're going to get that. I've got to say, the ground was pretty empty up to about 10 minutes before kickoff, but it's, it's really, I have some empty seats, but it's really filled up late. I think it was a morning for finding a local hostelry that was open. Stay warm in there, leave it to the very last moment. Or perhaps they were Christmas shopping. Back by McDonald for Celtic. Mark Crossas. He has been stamping his authority on matches in recent weeks. Now McGeady about to go on a mazy run. Robinson. Didn't quite reach Mole. And Rubens releasing it. There's pressure from Robinson. McGeady. Touch was poor. Andreas Hickel is still on the ground. The Smarts look for a bit of momentum. Landry and Guemo, who's looking forward to going to the World Cup finals with Cameroon next year. As you can tell, best, it's an outside bet to be with Portugal for the World Cup. I don't think he's anticipating being called up, but you never know. Gary Caldwell for Celtic. Now space opens up for Aidan McGeady. Dumbas trying to stay with him. It's Scott McDonald. Well, not noted from scoring from that type of distance. Has done in, in the odd occasion, but I think you know what McGeady will do is if he's not getting any joy in the wide positions and he is up against Wallace and they have got Pal as well as out there and maybe part of the reason for that is is to try and thwart McGeady that you know he has got the brains to come inside at the right time and poses a problem he certainly did that at Tanadise two or three weeks ago albeit Celtic lost the game but he was one of the better players Priority for Celtic and Tony Mowbray is to shore up the defence. They've shipped 11 goals in the eight away matches in the Clydesdale Bank Premier League this season. We get Johnson's pass. Too much on it for Ruben Palazuelos. Lee Wallace. And diligent Michael Stewart. Posing one or two problems for Gonzalez. Bozine playing alongside Gonzalez in the centre of the Hearts defence. Rosas. We heard the footsteps of Jonsen. Slipped on by Jamie Moore. Stewart. Egert Jonsson. They say made by Arthur Borutz. A good strike. Again, his Hinkle just getting caught in possession there. And again, Hearts, three, four bodies around the ball. In all fairness, I think Nguemo could probably make a challenge, which he didn't. Process. That's got McDonald's. There he goes, on the very edge of the area, attention from Gonzalez. Robson, and Sabaras. Well, there's two things there, Derek. The first thing, it should have been a free kick. The second thing is that when this ball's floated into the back post, and he is favourite to win it, look at McDonald. He's just got to nod this down. What's he trying to do? I'll tell you what he's trying to do there. He's trying to score. He's trying to lob it over the goalkeeper. And how that's not a free kick, I don't know. Look at the referee's position. He's looking straight at it, he plays none of the ball there. Really poor decision there from Rick Willie Cole, and a really poor decision there from George Samaras. 14th match in all competitions this season for Willie Cullum. A laissez-faire school as referees go, certainly on the evidence of the total number of cards handed out, 21 yellows, just the one red in his 13 games up to this point. McGeady. Behind him was in Gremo. Jonsen. 
scored twice in his last three matches, Egger Johnson. I think if I, if I was uh, Scott McDonald there, uh, Derek, I think I would be having more than a quiet word with George Samaras because I think the big striker tried to score there from a nigh and impossible position when you could see from the replays he was absolutely free of McDonald. It wasn't a difficult one, just nod it down to him. That's a perplexing player, Samaras. He's been on song recently. Goes in his last four matches in all competitions. I think that's what he's got to get in his head, that recently he's not good enough when you're playing for uh, the big two in Glasgow under the, the pressure of the spotlight of that. It has to be all the time. This is Giorgio Samaras. And he fancies the shots. And it's into the Gorgi stand. Well, they backed off and they backed off. He had, he had options. He had McDonald through the middle. He had Robson on the left. He had McGady on the right as well. And and maybe, you know, in today's conditions with the weather, you can see the pitch. It, it is quite bobbly. And whilst we don't like to give people excuses, it's, uh, it did a similar thing for McDonald earlier, in all fairness. Slowers out of play. And the boot of Lee Wallace. Through. Yes, hasn't given up hope of being named in the Germany squad for the World Cup. Right, in the nick of time by Lubens. Caldwell. From the start of the new year, Gary Caldwell, amongst others, will be able to talk to other clubs. In the final season of his contract. Cool. McDonald back to Laundry and Guema. Danny Fox, this place was in a little bit of doubt because of a minor injury he's been carrying. Greg Thompson with the heart stroke. Johnson. Scoring form, 14 goals in the last five games. Samaras. The foul was by David Templeton. Lubens. That was well read by Lee Wallace. This pass way lost to his left. Position really for Ruben Palazuelos. He operates through the middle. Magidi. The Rats defenders continue to back off. It's Samaras! And Marianne Keller making that dive and behind for the corner. Well, I'll tell you what happens here is Aidan Magidi doesn't track Lee Wallace on his run. That is a risk at times, but what it does do when Wallace loses it and breaks down, all of a sudden Magidi's got acres of space because he hasn't tracked the fullback. Hats are stretched. Magidi drives in. OK, McDonald might say, well, he should have slipped it to me. I think he picked the right ball in the end, in all fairness. Barry Robson in position to take it for Celtic. Samaras being marked by Gonzalez. And that's way lost, but no one there for Hearts. to Shabba Laszlo there in the technical area Celtic dominating in terms of ball possession I tell you that Shabba Laszlo got a mild rebuke seconds ago for kicking the advertising hoarding McGeady He's on the mood here, Aidan McGeady. Oh, 
tumble was taken by Robinson. Play rages on. This is Barry Robson for Celtic. Guemo. There's a fine understanding with Krosas in the centre of the Celtic midfield. Celtic and Sears. They just lost their way a little bit of hearts. What they're doing is young Scott Robinson, young 17 year olds, coming back quite a lot and and really to try and help his team out and, and his young teammates. But you know, they're leaving Jamie Mole up there on his own, and there's miles between the defence midfield and the striker, and it's just coming back all the time at them at the moment. Some steps aside, he'll leave this for Danny Fox to take. That's the left foot of Fox. Slightly off balance, Gary Caldwell. It was a free header, it was, I think it was, him. I think it was Boozy, he, he runs off. I got Johnson actually, before he loses, but it's just, just sort of behind them there, Gary Caldwell. So five efforts on goal by Celtic. It's the one from the home side. And the most important statistic of all. Nil-nil here at Tynecastle. It's given away by Samaras. And Robinson in position to shoot. It's blocked by Gary Caldwell. Palazuelos. Possibilities here for Hearts. Templeton. The second opportunity for Templeton, and Celtic were all at sea just then. Well, young Robinson did well initially. A good challenge from Colwell, and then it's a poor one from Hinkle. It's half-hearted and nice little dink ball from Palazuelas, and gets a bit of luck there, doesn't he? Young Templeton when he goes for the strike and completely scuffs it and sets up from to tries to, to lob it over Boric. You might remember his father, Henry Templeton. Played for Airdrie, Air United, Clyde Bank, Queen of the South, amongst other clubs. Robinson. Jonsson. It was a Super Bowl in the end. Templeton. And was outthought by Danny Fox. Last little surge ought to give Hearts some hope. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit better after a bit of concerted pressure and Chabo Laszlo's trying to G his young boys up. And, you know, it's difficult because, you, you know, you want to get players back and help, but they've got to match up, both playing 4-4-2, so they've got to try and keep two up there, Hearts, to try and pressurise the Celtic defence and have an out ball when they get in possession. Latecomers, Christian Nade not fit enough to start for Hart of Midlothian this afternoon. Hinkle. Here is McGeady, quick fire stuff from Celtic. Behind for the corner by Gonzalez that time. Yeah, Gonzalez did well again because McGeady comes inside. Hinkle gets down the wing and then McGeady makes the run in behind. He's trying to pick out McDonald, who I'm not sure if Gonzalez exactly knew where he was, but in the end he, he defended it pretty well. And trying to curl one in. Oh, and it's off the post, but turned in this time by Giorgio Samaras. He cannot stop scoring at the moment. Well, in a sense, you can see it coming. Hearts come unstuck at the set piece. Well, I mean, the huge question is, is who's picking up McDonald? And I think it's Michael Stewart, the captain. All he does here, he just backs off him. There you go. What is he, five foot seven, a free header in there? And I bet uh, Samaras loves scoring from that type of distance because you don't miss them. Happy days, he's got nobody there. They have dominated, but you cannot allow free headers, Derek, in the six-yard box. You'll get punished, and they have been. 
Seventh league goal of the season for Giorgio Samaras. Well, he is banging them in. Here is Samaras leading the line. It's a corner again of Gonzalez. Well, he should, he should have uh, headed one across Samaras for McDonald early in the game, and you can tell he, he obviously wasn't going to nod it across for his big strike partner there. And uh, obviously, he got a bit of luck, Samaras, when he came off the post. But Celtic have been dominant, and, and Hearts with the youngsters look, you know, a little bit afraid and a little bit, a little bit tepid. And they're just allowing Celtic to, to play and to dominate. Robson once more. Interesting, Mike, Michael Stewart's role and and that you know where you know McDonald's is there, he's standing. The, the, the three, the two of them are on the goalkeeper, and all he did, you've got the heart skippers picking him up, uh, and it, all he does is just backs off. You just have a look here. He's not looking. He's pointing at somebody else. He's trying to organise, but you've got to be aware of your own man. And well, the goalkeeper comes out and gets his hill in no man's land. Before you know it, it's at Samaras's feet. He's four yards out as an empty net, and you've got a mountain to climb. I'm sure Scott McDonald was the most surprised man here at Tynecastle to have that amount of freedom. Here is McDonald. Palazuelos. It is an awfully difficult task for the two hearts front men. Given the gap between the midfield players and the attackers that you were talking about, Craig. But it didn't start that way, did it, Derek? I mean, the first three, four, five minutes, it was they squeezed up, they were getting challenges in, they were obviously trying to rile the Celtic players, which you've got to do with bigger players, you've got to get in the face and make it difficult for them. But now, as the game's wore on, they've just sort of sat off, like this. And it's Aidan McGeady. Closed down by Jonsson. Here's Michael Stewart. He leads by example in the midfield area. Stewart, their former Manchester United apprentice. Ismail Bouzi. Here's Palazuelos now, it's opening up for Hearts. Lee Wallace. He's gone bombing into the area. Away by Caldwell. And then Grandma with the mistake. Jimmy Moore with that half chance. Boruts almost coming out of his area. A little fill out for Hearts again. Well, again, I mean, Wallace gets forward because, you know, McGeady at times won't track back, whether it's a, a lack of interest in tracking back or whether he just gets caught on the wheels at times, but there certainly was a lot of space for Wallace and didn't pick out the best cross, did he, in the end, under no real pressure. Flat throw by Gonzalez, but Samaras had the measure of it. Almost 25 minutes gone here at Tynecastle. And Celtic have the lead, courtesy of Giorgio Samaras. Samaras going down very easily. Again, this will be Gonzalez to take it. There's Craig Thompson. For that Totally Hearts Academy at Rickerton. Sliced away by Samaras. Celtic, remember, looking to close to within a point of Rangers. They ran riot yesterday against Motherwell. Winning 6 1. Greg Thompson tightly in on Barry Robson. Chance to make it five successive wins in all competitions in midweek. They drew with Rapid Vienna in the last Europa League group stage game. They were quite happy with the results when all was said and done. 3 3, having been 3 0 down. I just think that Europa League was such a huge disappointment for them, and, and we covered the first game in Tel Aviv where I think it went downhill from there after going in at half time leading and really threw that game away, didn't they, Derek? I think that's a very fair comment. Cruising as well, yeah, weren't they? They had it wrapped up. 
lost by two goals to one. Never really got going in the Europa League. Didn't have the best of luck. Hinkle. in search of a way back into this game. Wallace with a throw. It's not a goal by Palazuelos. Offside. Well, trying to team up with Robinson. A reminder, we've got Barclays Premier League football for you on ESPN tomorrow from 7pm. It is Wigan against Bolton. Join us for that, please. And we are back with Clydesdale Bank Premier League action on Wednesday, the 30th of December. Jim Jeffries, Kilmarnock side, up against Celtic. We'll be with you from Rugby Park. As always, for programming information and a lot more, log on to ESPNSoccerNet.com. Enjoying our Sunday SPL coverage here on ESPN, wherever you are. I hope you're warmer than us. Absolutely. Can you feel your toes? Uh, I'm struggling. <laughs> it's only going to get worse, mate, as the weeks go on. <laughs> not going to get better. At least with this being an early kickoff, we've got daylight accompanying the game. And Guaymo. And Guaymo. Something trying to keep a firm grip on the reins. Having taken the lead through Samaras on the ball now. That's been a struggle for Hart to win the ball and hang on to it, Craig. I think he's, he saw, I mean, I just looked at Jamie Moore there and he's just gesturing to his teammates, come on, squeeze up. Got to try and get up and support, they've got to try and squeeze up a bit more, I know they're in a bad run of results and there is that apprehension, and, but they might as well get the shackles off and, and, you know, try and squeeze the game a bit. They're getting overrun in midfield, Pal as well as didn't know where to step inside with McGeady when he steps inside or not, he's caught in no man's land. Very difficult for him at the moment. Hearts are about to enter the period where they usually score the majority of their goals. 40% of the SPL goals this season have come in the final 15 minutes of the first half. Haven't given Arto Boruts an awful lot to worry about so far. Gonzalez. Stewart showing for it. Egger Jonsson, the Icelandic international. Hawks did well initially. And oh, perhaps an opportunity here. And Gary Caldwell putting in the tackle inside the area. It's a red card for Caldwell. Jimmy Ball went to ground. And now things have changed quite profoundly. Celtic down to 10 men. Well, once he deems this a penalty kick, then it's got to be a red card, purely because of the area it was in, and he's the last man, and it's a goal-scoring opportunity for, for, for Jamie Moore. It goes past Lubens there, what's he doing? I don't know. Does he get into the ball? It's very difficult, it looks like he might have taken Moore first. I think that's a penalty kick, I've got to say that. It's a very tight call, but... I don't know if Lubens could have got something on that. Anyway, he sort of seemed to let it just go straight past him there. I've got to give credit to him all because he was on it like a flash. It's the third Celtic red card of the season. Michael Stewart scored against Celtic from the spot in the League Cup a couple of months ago. The Hearts get 10! 
It is one apiece. Beautifully converted. And now they believe. Well, it's a goal out and off, and in many ways he sort of redeems himself. OK, it was a big mistake for the goal, but he did allow McDonald to get off. That's the incident there, he takes the touch in the ball there. Mole gets there first, I've got to say. He takes the man first, Cobble, he then takes the ball. It's got to be the other way around. That is a good decision from Willie Collum. You've got to give him credit for that. And in many ways, Gary Cobble's unfortunate there because it's not his mistake. He was trying to make amends, but Celtic have to make the change now. But again, it was poor, poor play at the back from Celtic. And the change sees Stephen McManus come on for Mark Crossas. So the midfield player sacrificed. McManus takes over the armband as well. Now we have a game on our hands. Was scant evidence that Hearts were going to bother Arthur Boris and the Celtic defence. It really came out of nothing. Well, I, I know Celtic fans watching and, and will probably think, well, that, that was tight, and it was a tight decision, but I've got to say that that angle there, that slow-mo angle, just showed where, you know, he just nicked the ball away, Jamie Mole, and he took the leg first, call, then he played the ball. It has to be the other way around. It's just got to be the other way around, you've got to play the ball first. And I think Willie Cole gets it spot on here, we'll get another look again. He just gets there first, then he takes the left leg and ball. This is the referee's view of it here. He gets there first, there's no doubt about that, and then he takes the leg call. Celtic fans might think it's a tight call, and it is, but he's got to go. Well, the important tackle that time by Barry Robson. With Templeton looking menacing. We're on here, Samaras going down. Hearts one, Celtic one. And now Willie Collum is going to have a quiet word with Craig Thompson. Well, Mark Venus decidedly upset. It's being restrained there by Steve Conroy, the fourth official. Still trying to catch her breath. And for that frantic minute or so, it's the sixth red card of Gary Caldwell's career. That led to a penalty which was swept home by Michael Stewart for Hearts. It was out of nothing as well, wasn't it? You know, you just looked at Hearts and you thought, well, you know, they've lost the goal, they're not dominating the game, they're sitting off Celtic, it's been difficult to get any support up to the front two or the front one with young Robinson dropping off and, and all of a sudden, bang, you're back in the game. Here's Mole. Jonsson. Jamie Mole. Oh, McManus. Pumping it into the main stand. season really for Stephen McManus started off the campaign injured it's been a struggle to find his form of old Craig Thompson and Stewart Thompson and it pulls around it's Robinson away on the end by Fox for Celtic there's one or two claims for handball, I think it was Leuven's, but to be honest with you, I think he saw it so late as it came over some bodies and bounced up. One or two were calling for a penalty. Aidan McGeady, had to go on that slalom run. The stretching was Wallace for Hearts. I don't, I don't very often feel sorry for Gary Cole because I think he, you know, he gets himself in so many difficult positions, but I've got to say, he's, he's totally blameless in a way, because he's only trying to dig them out of the hole there, and he's paid the ultimate price.
And his timing was just a fraction off. Just a fraction, just a fraction. There will be some that still think it wasn't a penalty, but you know, in my opinion, I think the, the slow mo angle certainly cleared it up for sure. Call on the referee. Celtic having to soldier on with 10. I've got to say, Mo was onto it like a flash as well, wasn't he? Really quickly onto it. And Wallace to that pass by Robinson. Stephen McManus and to be swift. Gonzalez, Lubens, Wallace. Well, let's have a look at this equaliser for Hearts and could Glenn Lubens in a little bit better here. Sloppy here, sloppy header from McGeady and why does Lubens let it run across him? Really puts his central defensive partner right in the mire because Cobble's then going to make the challenge, cut the pieces of poor play really let Hearts back into the game, also Celtic down to 10 men, McCall will going off for that challenge, got to feel sorry for him, but my, how this game has turned on that one or two bad decisions from Celtic defenders. It's all happened in the blink of an eye, Craig. It did, because, you know, Fox headed it out and then McGady was in the left and he sort of, I think he must have been trying to head it back to Leuven too. God only knows why he let it run across him on the edge of his own box. You've, you've got to go and try and deal with that. Anyway, we have a game on now again. Thomas Waylos sees the decision go against him here. And Guaymo. Out of the midfield area. McGeady had gone into the centre forward position. Santa got defeated in the last eight league meetings with Hearts. Defeated in the last four visits to Tyne Castle. Did hold the advantage here, thanks to Giorgio Samaras, but that goal cancelled out. A penalty from Michael Stewart for Hearts. It's Bouzy, keeping it on the ground. Jonsson. A versatile player, Egert Jonsson. Can be used at full-back. In midfield, he can play as a striker in his time. Palazuelos, Wallace, it's come to Ruben Palazuelos. Wild, wild finish. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think that's spot on. He's not really been in this type of position very often. He's spent it, spent most of the time having checking where Eddie McGeady is going to be. And well, it's a difficult one. Lubens is putting him under a bit of pressure in there. To say from Celtic's point of view, they've dropped sort of Samaras a bit deeper, but he tends to do that anyway, you know, in all fairness. He's maybe just going to have to work that a little bit harder, George Samaras, leaving McDonald up there on his own. And did it rush off the arm of McDonald? Craig Thompson felt that was the case. And down went Robinson. Oh, by McManus. Wallace. That's where he lost the Spaniard, the man from Santander. Nicole sticking to his task. McGeady. Self-belief, Aidan McGeady. Confidence in his own ability on the ball. Samaras. And a play off the boot of Ismail Bouzi. And 
McDonald, taking Bouzid with him. It's when things like that happen, Derek, when, and things go against you as a half for Celtic at the moment, that you, you, remind, you remind yourself of when, you know, things like when Samaras should have headed up back across to McDonald, which would have been an empty goal or a tap in. That's when being greedy and doing things like that start to come back to haunt you. Celtic appeared to be in control of this game. Well, the challenge is a very different one. Reduced as they are to ten men. With the scoreline level. Jose Gonzalez. Spent last season on loan in Germany, Gonzalez. With Nuremberg, made 14 appearances for them. Exercise their option to retain him. Yeah, I mean, he's decent, isn't he? I've got to say, for, for Hearts, he's decent. I mean, I heard the lads talking about there was some reports of him going to Celtic, and well, I just don't see that. But certainly not from Celtic's point of view, I think that wouldn't be moving forward. But certainly, you know, I think he has been one, if not their best player, very strong. It's one of the Hearts players will be out of contract at the end of the season. Quickly that time was Templeton, and it's Kello. Evans knew he had to get there. McGeady. Robson. Samaras finding himself out in the wide position on the Celtic left. Did remarkably well. McGeady. And we'll try to stretch the Hearts defence. Attempted to pick out Scott McDonald. One thing they certainly don't have to do now, Hearts, is drop Young Robinson back into midfield. They've got the extra man in there now, so they can put the two up. Keep Lovins and Manus, who has come on for the centre half, Gary Cobble, who's been sent off. McDonald tangling with Gonzalez. Scott McDonald, Celtic's top scorer. And in time at the end of the first half. There's McManus. Oh, no, and in time as it turns out. Talking points are plenty here in the capital. Giorgio Samaras giving Celtic the lead. Michael Stewart with the equaliser from the spot. That after Gary Caldwell had been given his marching orders. Willie Collum sending him off after he had spotted that Caldwell had taken out Jamie Mole inside the area. It's a radically different picture now, Celtic were in command, but now they might just have it all to do. Half-time score at Tynecastle is Hearts 1, 10-man Celtic 1. Six thirty early this evening here on ESPN. It's talk of the terrace, followed by the Syria match between Inter Milan and Lazio. Welcome back to ESPN Match Day Live. Half-time score at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Celtic 1. SPL action here on ESPN. Colin Hendry and Scott Booth are on duty in the studio. Well, interesting, fascinating match this has turned into. Yeah. Samaras gives Celtic the lead. And I guess this is what we were expecting. We are expecting Celtic to be in the ascendancy. Well, Hearts started well, first 10 minutes, pre pressed really well, and then Celtic crept into it through McGeady, picking the ball up in midfield. And, and this one, though, you see Michael Stewart 
you know, we, we talked about it during as it was happening and thinking that Michael Stewart actually believes that Scott McDonald is behind him because he feels contact, but it's actually his goalkeeper that's contact and we think. So the ball goes over the top of him. He thinks it's going over the top of McDonald as well, but yeah. actually he's just drifted to the back post. Mm -hmm. So he gets caught. Hearts didn't cover themselves in glory defensively there. No. But what about the sending off and the penalty? We've watched it several times. Let's look at it again. Was it a penalty, Colin? I think it is a penalty kick. I really do. I mean, if you look at the angle of the referee, he's got that split, this split time decision to make it. He makes his decision, he sticks with it. I feel desperately sorry for Gary Caldwell, though, because I think he might feel as well that he's got his, his toe to the ball after, after the, the striker Mo has played the ball initially. Um, is it, if we, we, we've sat and watched this four or five times, Ray, and you know, we are still not. Here's the angle, look at this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they, they're, they're all, I think they're all good shots because you're seeing where the referee's position is as well. And I think for, for the referee, you, you cannot criticise. Did he get the ball? From, look from where he is. No. He, he, I think he gets contact with the, the striker first and then the ball. So yes, I think it is a penalty, definitely. Mm -hmm. But Gary Caldwell, how unlucky! I mean, yeah. he he gets himself back in there. He makes what he thinks I think is a, is a, a good challenge. He gen, genuinely believes that he gets the ball and doesn't get the player. Mm -hmm. um, it's a last ditch tackle. It wasn't his problem. It was Lovins. Lovins looks indecisive again. He should just go and take the ball. Um, puts his partner in problems. Jimmy Moore, great reaction. You know, he's quick. He gets on it in a, in a flash. But for, for there's the, a lot of criticism being pointed towards Gary Caldwell this season, and you know, this is another issue for him to do. He's a professional footballer. He's trying to get his, you know, be as sensible as he can when he plays, make right decisions, and he's had to pick up the or the, bass, <laughs> the, the box been passed <laughs> by his partner, really. And and it's, it's, just, it's, it's desperately unlucky for him. Desperately unlucky. I mean, it's just, just par for the course for Celtic yeah. this season at the back, and that's why we talked about it before the game, and we're talking about it now. Yeah. yeah. The ball was zipping around a bit more. Celtic were doing OK, but now yep. they've got a real scrap on their hands. Uh, precious Premier League points at stake today. Hearts and Celtic contesting an SBL match in the Scottish capital of Edinburgh. Second half is on the way. Samaras for Celtic, but it's 10-man Celtic. A red card, a Hearts penalty. It's one all, and there's everything to play for. Rising star will be Colin in Scottish refereeing terms. One of the younger officials. Well, he's easy, easy. We'll not let's not go too far. Come on, hey. <laughs> we'll praise them enough today. I know he's always praising you, Craig, when he bumps into you at the airports. He did. He, he bumped into me in a, in a bar in Birmingham Airport and, and give me give me a lot of stick. Uh, but I can uh, cheer him up by saying he, he's not alone in doing that if he, if he doesn't like me <laughs> but uh, yeah good decision let's hope we get uh, let's hope we've got an exciting second half and it's hard to begin the second half attacking the goal to our right playing towards the Gorgie Road end of Tynecastle. that's have managed just one victory in the last nine SPL games four home matches without a the last victory here You've got to go back to the 26th of September when Hamilton were put to the sword. Jonsson. Greg Thompson. Zestful young fullback. Stewart. And Glamo getting in the way. And Stewart carries on. Had to brush aside the challenge that came in from Barry Robson. Celtic with ten men. Gary Caldwell sent off. Now better play by Bouzine. Missed the Dundee United match last week, but 0 draw through suspension. Ismail Bouzine. This is his red card at New Douglas Park a fortnight ago. Up goes Samaras. Kello is there to collect. More news from the side of the pitch, Daryl Curry. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, well, I actually had a brief conversation with Gary Caldwell at half-time. Obviously, he's very unhappy about the decision. He thinks he won the ball. He's not 100% sure if he took the ball before the man, but all he said he could feel was he touched the ball and he's convinced, well, that it shouldn't have been a red card at the very least. I think we've all said, haven't we, Craig, that we feel a bit sorry for Gary Caldwell. It was touch and go. Well, it goes through uh, Jamie Moe's left shin to get to the ball, and you've got to play the ball first. So we can inform Gary that uh, 
it was the correct decision. He may feel aggrieved, but hey, that's life. It, it wasn't his fault. Let's see, had to commit himself. But the evidence shows it was a correct decision by Willie Collum. Here's Johnson and Wallace in support. And Jamie Ball tried to turn it towards goal. Steve McMahon has just did enough to put Jamie Moll under pressure. You can see the extra bodies here, Celtic stretched. Decent ball in just behind Moll and, and McMahon is the replacement, just doing enough in there, putting him under enough pressure. Stephen McManus who came on, seconds after Gary Caldwell had been sent off. Two goals in that match against Hearts in January 2006. Celtic have won 18 times out of 19 when McManus has found the net for them. It's Johnson, and it's over hit. Tony Mowbray, of course, used to work here in the capital as manager of Hibernian. Shabalazlo, the extrovert. Hearts manager should have been watching the Bundesliga game later between Cologne and Nuremberg here on ESPN. He does like his Bundesliga football. Oh, and scurrying forward here is Robinson and Bollutz for Celtic. Gonzalez That's for the direct approach. against ten. One goal apiece. Forward by Jonsson. And Guemo. Jojo Samaras. Could keep it in, but that was all. A top set. A quick and effective ball into the stride of Eggert Johnson. They could have got a better first touch there then. You know, Jamie Moore was away on the left hand side. Thompson. Now it's Fox. And Guemo for Celtic. Nico being shadowed by Palazuelos. Samaras, there's Craig Thompson beside him. Templeton trying to join in defensively. Away goes Aiden Nagini. This is what he does so well! And off the post, so near. And it was self-made by Aidan McGeady. Uh, I think that's the thing, we even we sailed it down to ten men, that, you know, they've still got potential match winners in their team. And, and what you can do is, what, what Hearts did here, and that was sit off McGeady, back off, and they back off, they get sucked in. You know, Boozy backing off, Consalves backing off, because McDonald makes the run. Kello spots it quite late, and it's only inches between Celtic taking the lead, and there is the warning to Hearts, OK, Celtic down to ten men, but with guys that him around, potential match winners, you've always got to be on your guard. And Celtic have the quality to win this match, even though they are down to ten. Jose Gonzalez, McManus, and Guemo. trying to bring his influence to bear again. Now Robinson, and it's McManus. Well, so look at the strike again from McGeady. I think the one thing to think about as well is that we're down to ten men, is there anybody following up in here? 
McDonald's a little bit static. OK, it comes out the wrong side, and had it come out his side, it might have been lucky, but there's no George Samaras in the picture there, and I just wonder, with a man down, whether they're going to take some chances. Samaras should be trying to get himself into the box. Greg Thompson. Samaras is trying to put the wind up here. Lee Wallace, he's played a couple of times for Scotland. Lee Wallace, recent months, the games against Japan and Wales. That's Greg Thompson for Templeton. And Danny Fox. No contact, apparently. No foul. Well, I think he played for it, the young team, and he actually did well initially, and I don't think he needed to do that. That's Samaras. Trying to burst away from Craig Thompson. And Bouzid, Samaras. He's always going that little bit wide. Yeah, I've just got a funny feeling this is going to become a really open second half. I certainly hope so in terms of entertainment here, but again, he's got ability, Samaras. He doesn't always produce, and this is the complaints from Young Templeton. Just the right arm comes across. I don't think it's a freak. I don't think there's enough in it. There's going to be some contact, unfortunately, for the young fella. It's a learning process, and you've got to be a bit stronger. David Templeton, 20. Yeah, yeah. Now then, here's what I call him going to do here. Simply be a free kick. He's been kept busy this one. Barry Robson standing over the free kick. That was missed completely by Craig Thompson. It's McGeady shuffling. Didn't quite keep it down, Eden McGeady. Yeah, I mean, it's not great defending, and I think, for, for starters, a free kick from this position, hearts are too deep there. You know, it's so far out, they've got to be... At, late, at worst, they've got to be in the 18-yard line, for sure, and try and squeeze out. They backed off a little bit, worked its way out to McGeady, who'd found a bit of space, and it looks like, I would imagine, either some changing in terms of the, the shape on the pitch or whether it's a personnel change, Peter Grant talking to Tony Mowbray about it. Celtic were on top, Samaras giving them the lead. And the penalty incident changed everything. Harry Cornwell sent off, Michael Stewart converting from the spot. David Templeton. No joy for Scott Robinson. Samaras. Confident turn, and Buzid is struggling to stay with the Greek international, Scott McDonald. Now, Gonzalez and Wallace who are matching his run. Wallace did his job. That's a great turn from Samaras here, but have a look at Buzid. He's, looks like he's got a grand piano on his back there, he's trying to chase Samaras back. That's a lovely little ball back in for, for McDonald. Great defending from Wallace, I've got to say. He's the little poacher trying to snipe across that near post, but a real lack of pace there from Boozy because Samaras is not the quickest. It's Boozy getting caught up the pitch and struggling to get back. Robson and Lubens. Well, they'll try it again. Yeah, great defending this time, Boozy. <laughs> Better. Got his man there. Feels him tight to him, gets the left arm across. That's good defending, much better. Celtic trying to ratchet things up. Robson and McDonald took a deflection before going through to Manny and Kello in the heart school. Poor defending again. Just runs off walls, I think it is. Who is sleeping really? And, and you cannot, you can't allow free headers like that from that type of distance. He got one in the first half and. And that produced the goal for Celtic. It's obviously, Hearts haven't heeded the warning. Christian Nade could be about to make an appearance for Hearts. That goes Gonzalez here. There's McGeady draped all over him. Martin Cryans just momentarily losing his flag. Martin Cryans, the 
Assistant. Stewart. Mark Antoine Fortuny has been instructed to start warming up for Celtic. Real scuffle here, Craig Thompson and Samaras involved. You can see what the Celtic players think about it. Well, it was Robson, actually, it was Robson coming in with a really ferocious challenge here. Really, really aggressive on young Thompson. Two players round Samaras and, and Hearts players, in my mind, made some good challenges there. And then Barry Robson really steamed in. And it is Robson who is going to have his name taken. Caution for Barry Robson. Well, I think he was pointing uh, what they call him because he said he was one early in the game, and that's your second one. He actually catches Samaras, in all fairness, and Thompson. So, it's, you know, I think another correct decision from Willie Collin. Just take the sting out of it, try and calm it down a little bit. It was a yellow card, of that there was no doubt. It was a rash challenge. He actually caught his own man as well in there. Maybe a sign of frustration as Hearts look to make a change. Do they smell a bit of blood? And it's going to be Christian Nate for Scott Robinson. So the 17-year-old departs, having made two starts in the space of eight days. Christian Nate hasn't been able to train very much this week. He's tall and he's strong, but he's not a prolific goal scorer. Well, it was, they applauded the young fellow went off, and it was quite funny because they actually sat down when he came on in the Hearts fans, which I think tells the story. Had the best of luck this season, Christian Nade. Well, that time, Jonsson. The pass by Ruben Palazuelos. It's too strong for Nade. I think that has been a, a disappointing part of the game from Hearts, even with the extra man that Palazuelos, Jonsson. And Stewart, especially in there, those, those three, and especially the central two, the passing under under no real pressure has been pretty sloppy. Mark Antoine Fortuna going through his paces, scored three goals in the past week. He's going to be given a run. confrontation here at Tynecastle. Hearts one, ten-man Celtic one. Nade. It's controlled by Enguemo, who tries to start something for Celtic. Hinkle. And Gonzalez. And Scott McDonald for in Gonzalez. Samaras must score! Oh, it was there for him. And the Greek international knows it. Well, we're just hearing from downstairs that it's McDonald that's going to come off for Fortuny. I just wonder if Tony Mowbray's thinking about changing his mind after that, because really and truly, there's a gaping hole. And there you go, you've got defenders. How many times do we see it trying to shepherd the ball out? And credit McDonald there, because he just never gave up. Oh, look at the head and the hands from McDonald. He's done all the hard work. He said, there you go, Georges, get yourself a goal. You should have headed one back across to me in the first half. You didn't, you were too greedy, but I'm a team player. I'm going to give you an open goal, and no wonder Celtic fans have got their head in their hands. The Celtic supporters in the Rosebound stand are right behind. What's happened? Well, will that moment come back to haunt Celtic? There might have been a bobble, Derek. I'm being sarcastic, I don't think there was, mate. It was, uh, it was, a, it was time for a bit of composure, which was sorely lacking. And Nade trying to hold the up here for Hearts, Christian Nade! He's narrowly wide. Well, he's big, he's big and strong, I mean, of that there is no doubt. Uh, he is a big old lump now. He's got some, I think, some huge deficiencies in his game. But he'll give them a problem, he'll give them something different. Now Scott McDonald is the player to go off. And on is coming Mark Antoine Fortuny. He's got five goals. Four Celtic this season, 15 total appearances in all competitions. The man who joined from Nancy in a deal worth around £3.8 million pounds last summer. Jan 
Richardson. And Stewart was up there in the advanced position. Nagini, Jamie Moore, only getting stuck in for Hearts. Palace way loss. Let that look effortless. And poking it away from Fortuna. It wasn't quite a, a Ronnie Rosenthal miss from a few years ago. If, if, if our viewers can remember that when he, he missed a knock and go from the penalty spot, but it, it still was a sitter. Select it's going to have to go down as one of the misses of the season in the Clydesdale Bank Premier League so far. Yeah, I'm sure it's not the last we'll see of it. And Guema. Kills through over Celtic, Barry Robson. Here is Stewart. Nade. Oh, Gonzalez has to cover a fair bit of ground. Trying to keep McGeady in check. Samaras. Pulls kindly for Stewart. Templeton. Templeton getting it back from Mole. You might recall earlier this season, Rangers prevailed here at Tyne Castle by two goals to one, despite down to ten men from the early part of the game on. Kevin Thompson was sent off. Sets it with ten here, Wallace. And Moll was just trying to get goal side of McManus. It's a corner. Well, Moll just did enough that what he was going to do was make the, the clearance uncomfortable for Stephen McManus and well, he sort of skews it off that right boot. There's not been many corners for Hearts that I can remember anyway, so let's see if we can get a decent... It's, inter it's interesting that it's the right back, it comes across and takes it. There's a big 18-year-old right back at that. Thompson, cross corner and Palazuelos is trying to flick it towards the six yard area, fielded by Boruts. Yeah, I just think of Johnson, Johnson's, got Johnson's on his toes a bit here, he might, he's watching number four there, just a bit on his heels. Almost 20 minutes into the second half. Danny Fox is moving a bit gingerly as we speak. Space has opened up for Andreas Hinkle. Well, to gather is Marianne Keller. Molly well, Wallace gave the ball away, left back, bit sloppy. Again, Samaras not making an effort to get an only opportunity hit and very tight to, to pick him out there. Keller feeding Templeton. and Celtic could be in real trouble, Jerry Moore. Glenn Lubens was right by his side. But no shout at all from the Hearts players. Yeah, lots of, lots of shouts from the Hearts fans. Poor from Robson puts them in trouble here. And, yeah, I just think he leans into him a bit. Touches a bit the ball, good defending, just nicks it, gets a toe on it. Similar to what, you know, Cobble did in all fairness. The difference was he played the ball first there, Lubens. Gonzalez and Nade was up. Manus getting there first. Magidi. Greg Johnson was trying to hold his ground. And Billy McNeil, now one of the Celtic ambassadors, former captain and manager. As Former Celtic centre half score. Up there with the very best of them. Former Man City manager as well, huh? I think he wants the job now at Man City. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, John Hughes and John Robertson there. John Robertson, Hearts legend. John Hughes, current Hibernian boss. A bit of extra cash today. 
Catania defeated Aberdeen yesterday by two goals to nil. But Audrey. Apparently Tony Mowbray is unhappy about what's happening whenever Jose Gonzalez takes these long throws. Well, I mean, he's, he's over in that far side, he's been taking a lot of throws, and he does, he lifts, lifts the leg up, which is a foul throw. I watched him do it, he was away back in the left-hand corner when he did it. Actually, right in front of the referee's assistant, who, who, who didn't get it. We'll have uh, an extra close look at Gonzalez next time. So he does line up to take those long throws whenever he can. Goes out for a throw in an attacking position. Magidi fouled here by Wallace. He's locked in conversation, Tony Bobray with Steve Conroy, the fourth official. Samaras helping it on, Greg Thompson and Frotone. Looking to force a mistake from Kello. The decision goes Hart's way. Uh, Fortuny just uh, in the Celtic fans behind the goal here. And no, he put the keeper under pressure and it was Kello who had the last touch and well, it's either a corner kick or it's a free kick. Willie Collum says goal kick. Believing that the ball had come off the head of Marc Antoine for two days. Shot behind ball against Aidan McGeady. Fox. Samaras. Couldn't control it properly. It's been difficult for young Templeton, isn't it? On the right, he's not done anything bad, but he's, you know, Fox is. Quite an experienced defender, and I just I think that's just shown between the full back and, and young David Templeton and, and the right sided player for Hearts. Jamie Ball Up against Glenn Lubens. Spicy encounter here in Edinburgh. match for the two sides before Christmas. And Robson, all the way through to Keller. Don't forget, we've got live football tomorrow on ESPN from the Barclays Premier League. It's an old Lancashire affair, Wigan against Bolton, and we're back with the Clydesdale Bank Premier League on Wednesday the 30th of December from Rugby Park. It'll be Kilmarnock against Celtic. For more, go to ESPNSoccerNet.com. Headed on by Johnson. Fortuna. It's the distinctive running style of Aidan McGeady. Free kick. Wallace feels a bit hard done to. I think there's going to be a booking as well for Lee Wallace. Well, he's, I mean, he's running at pace here, McGinney, he's driving in. I, I thought he was starting to go down before there was any contact. Again, I think he's looking for that, McGinney, he gets it now. We've been over this ground before and uh, several times this season with McGinney. I wouldn't say that was a dive on that particular occasion, although I have been critical of him before, but he certainly looked to me as if it was, uh, it looked as if he was going down quite easily. Robson together. Celtic trying to change the course of this game. Three points with ten men would represent the perfect Christmas present. I do, think, hoops. I do think that was soft, Derek. I've got, I've got to say that. If, if anything comes to this, we, we may go back and have a look at it. It's going to be Barry Robson. Confidently struck. One bounce and into the clutches of Keller. Yeah, I mean, it's he's not one of his better strikes, but it's a long way out, I'll give you that. It's difficult. Just bounces in front of the goalkeeper, but in, in fairness, Keller does well. Yeah. 
out by Robson to Fortuna. Just to play with his back to goal mark, Antoine Fortuna. Not a natural finisher, though you wouldn't know that from his form in the past few days. Well, he needs a big turnaround, doesn't he, Fortuna? Because, you know, he, uh, I saw some, uh, I read some quotes from him today in the paper saying well, I thought it was only going to be two or three tough games a year believe me when you're, when you're playing at a big club then every week is pressure well the base of action had to be taken by the photographer down there and it Ronnie Cullen has got the card out it's Buzid, Buzid it's now Buzid being spoken to Is yellow card for the Algerian defender. It's Gonzalez hasn't let the subject drop. Well, let's have a look at the initial instant in the corner. Well, it doesn't do anything wrong there, Brizzy, apart from he takes the cameraman out. And there's a little bit after here. There's a bit of afters with either the players or the crowd, who the Celtic crowd down in that corner were particularly incensed. Confirmation of the booking for Ismail Bouzi, a player in his first season here at Tynecastle. <laughs> Samaras. Managed to get away initially from Thompson. Johnson couldn't stop him either. Samaras is down. Appears to be in real pain. And Guemo for Celtic. Someone else back on his feet now. Uh, someone else took a knock, but you know whether there was a free kick or not. I think what they call a play an event advantage here. It's Consalves it got. And bear in mind, there's been some afters between that particular pair. We saw on the replay earlier the two of them mouthing to each other, so I think that was a bit of revenge there for Gonzalez. A boot of McManus was raised, and a yellow card it is. McManus on Nade. The booking is coming thick and fast now, Craig. Yeah, and I think this is what Hearts had to do from the start of the game, was try and make it scrappy and have a bit of needle in the game. And of course it's been easier to do that since Gary Colwell sending off because Celtic were pretty much dominating up to the end, they got the goal, but the game turned on that. Craig Thompson. Inside the final quarter of an hour. Templeton. Oh, that's one of the best balls we've seen all day! And Ismail Bouzid is the most unlikely goal scorer for Hearts. Bouzid's first goal for the club comes against Celtic, and it might turn out to be a match winner. Well, how Tyne Castle erupts. And I tell you what, you will go a long way to see a better ball in anywhere this weekend, in any league, from young Templeton. Great header from Boozy, the big centre-half, not to pick him up again, but I said he found it difficult against Danny Fox in general play, and he has. But one piece of magic from the young fella. What a ball and an absolute peach. And there was the big centre-half, still up from the initial set-piece. His job's done, what a header. Well, Ismail Bouzid celebrated with the fans. Interacting with them. And now finds himself off the pitch. Now he was replaced as Mahal Puzi. Sariukas, the player on. And there is Sariukas. Who has been out injured for the last couple of months? 
And there is a change for Celtic as well. Niall McGinn for Andreas Hinkle. So Celtic are forced to gamble now. Trailing as they are, this match has been turned on its head. Tidied up by McManus. It's Hearts 2, Celtic 1. Celtic, remember, four points behind Rangers. That's by Thompson. Here's Moll. Celtic on the back foot again. It missed out Nade. Missed out Palazuelos, too. The goal by Ismail Bouzid. And the Algerian replaced by Marius Zanioukas. The Lithuanian, Jamie Moll. And Lubens for Celtic. Have a third goal in them. Guemo trying to get back to Arthur Boruts. Palazuelos. His hearts try to keep the ball. And again. Palazuelos holding his ground. Nade. going to become the latest Hearts player to be booked. Yeah, they've got McGinn away down the right as well. So, you, know, so you can just see McGinn there, top of your shot, he, he was away. So, in many ways, that's a good booking for Jonsson to take for his team. And by Fox. And Lubens unable to get there. Well, how a game turns round. Bouzid, gone off, Jabba Laszlo, we were chasing the game, going nowhere really, and then things have turned big time for them. Andreas Hinkle at the back post, experienced defender, you've mentioned the fact he's wanting to go to the World Cup, he's hoping to get a late call, well, not with, not with defending like that at the back post, I've got to say, but young Templeton can feel very proud of himself, Derek. And it was no wonder he sprinted all the way across because it was a wonderful ball in. I'm sure his dad Henry enjoyed watching that as well. Long serving professional in Scottish football. David Templeton, the architect. Ismail Buzi, the finisher. Hearts 2, Celtic 1. It's great to see. I just like to see some of these younger players get the chance because it's been quite obvious to me that. Some of the foreign contingent that Hearts have brought in, I just know we're near good enough, and I'm pleased to see uh, the kids get the chance today. Now here's Fortune and Zaliukas, the covering defender, go kick. Uh, well, we talked just at the end of the first half. We were talking, and we were saying, well, how things change game decisions. You know that header from McGeady and, and Lewins lets it run across him, and all of a sudden Colwell's got a decision to make. He's got to make the challenge. Didn't quite get there, fine, little fine lines make the difference. And, and going back to just earlier before that, that Samaras header, when he should have nodded it back across to Scott McDonald. And would that have taken Tony Mowbray's side out of reach? Bad decisions can yes. change games. That moment, looming large likewise, the missed chance by Samaras. So Peter's out here for Celtic. Really was a golden opportunity. Came the way of Giorgio Samaras, here it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, I'd actually forgotten about that one, as was that much going on, but, you know, there's, there's, but there is no excuse. You've just, you've just got to hold your hands up and say it's not good enough. And also, when I mean, you look at Hinkle here, he's got to get round the back. Leuvens is not really aware, but he's got to be expecting a very experienced fullback Hinkle to have himself in a good position, and he wasn't. Good header, great cross, big mountain to climb now for Celtic. What can they throw at Hearts? 
in the last eight minutes. Plus added time. Londri and Guaymar. Gonzalez. Thomas Lelos has given Lee Wallace a favour of protection on that heart's left. Samaras, oh, he's got the break of the ball. Excellent stop by Keller. Hearts can breathe again for now. Well, it's a good save, Derek, but if you watch Fortuny here as well, when we spoke about it earlier, nobody following in. You watch Fortuny when Keller makes a save. He's static. Good opportunity. So Yukis gets a bit tight, gets too tight here. As it comes out, you look at, you look at Fortuny, edge of the box, not interested. Another yellow card is coming. And it's for Jose Gonzalez. Well, it was a pretty tame first half, wasn't it? Okay, one sending off, but a bit tight then against Gonzalez. I think uh, Platuni was quite pleased to feel the arm around him and thought, I'm going to go down. Samaras's position is interesting again here. He's in an offside position, as you can see. Middle of a six yard box, so they have to be wary of him. They'll try and get himself back on. Here is Barry Robson and Fortuna and how on earth did it not go in? That's the question that he's posing. Well, he's trying to head it back across for Samaras here, isn't he? And, well, he's, he think, maybe he thinks he's going to head the post as well, and, and Kello knows nothing about it. He literally turns around and it's in his hands. Testing times for Celtic. Robson, back to Borutz. There might have been a bit of arm in here as well. Got a better look from here, very close to the post, the elbow. Yeah, a bit of head, just nicks off his head and his arm, and it's in the goalkeeper's hands. Is that a little bit of luck that may yeah. just kickstart the season for Hearts? You never know. Well, Hearts are a club in need of a bit of good fortune. Started this match, a couple of points clear of the relegation position. That's not where they feel they belong. Roberto Nadi has put himself about since coming on. That was a bit clumsy. Going in on Fox. And David Kuharski is going to make his way on. Polish defender. Well, there is going to be a talking to for Jamie Ball. I think he's the player actually about to be substituted. Substitution for his number is up. And so the striker is withdrawn. 21-year-old Jamie Ball. And only his third appearance of the campaign. And so the defence is bolstered with the introduction of Kuharski. Yeah, he worked hard mode, didn't he? And he played a huge part for the for the, the Michael Shoot penalty and the Gary Cole sending off, which absolutely no doubt has changed the game. Just over four minutes to go. Hearts leading Celtic by two goals to one. And they're by Enguemo, trying to find Fortuna. And previously teammates at Nancy in France. To me, that did. Thompson played it off for Tunney, and amazingly, they've given, given, it to, given it to Celtic. It's come to Fox, and it spins off Craig Thompson, who's still incensed about the previous decision. Yeah, well, I felt Thompson has tried to clear this. You watch, just nicked off his toe there, I think, to be honest with you. Robson with the corner, Lovins with the header! And off the line. And it was Craig Thompson who was back. Crucial contribution. Well, if there's anybody wondering why you put people in the post, then their folks is your answer because that was in the top corner. If he wasn't there, the young lad. And a 
drawn back by Barry Robson. Lubens remember it was who scored the late winner for Celtic against Hearts at Parkhead earlier this season. Uh, Templeton with an ungainly challenge on Danny Fox. And the crown count continues to rise, Craig. Yeah, a, a bit overzealous from a young lad. And all fairness to Fox, right, straight back in his feet, no complaints. Wants to get on with the game, Danny Fox. Credit, just gets up. No qualms, part of the game. And there by Fox for Celtic. Remo back to his goalkeeper, Arthur Boris. Fast and furious here at Tynecastle. Templeton, the latest player boots. Eighty-five days since last Hearts prevailed at home. McGeady with that ball in towards Fortuna. The corner's been given. Well, I can tell was asleep in here as this ball comes in. He's on his heels. You watch him. Thinks he's got time to clear it on his left foot. You don't get get that amount of time, and Fortuna almost got across the front of him. Robson, Samaras couldn't quite get the header on it. And Lucas tied it up and away goes Lee Wallace. The charge is on for Hearts. He's taken away by Nguema. It won't be a Hearts ball. And this will just take a bit of the sting out of it. And Hearts moving under a bit of pressure. Tony Mowbray not particularly happy. I think he thinks that wasn't out. It's been a frustrating day. Looks like it might be a frustrating day. For Tony Mowbray's side, he can still afford the rice smile. Celtic unbeaten in the last eight league meetings with Hearts. Now it's Fortuny and hesitancy from Hearts and Marc Antoine Fortuny couldn't quite create the angle he wanted. Keller to the rescue. Well, I tell you, Marion Keller is a lucky fella here because this travels the best part of 60, 70 yards. It's in the box by the time Fortuny picks it up. Surely the goalkeeper starting position has to be better than that. In the end, he does make a save. And Fortuny doesn't take advantage of a good opportunity. Can Hearts hang on? Look at that disparity in terms of corners. Barry Robson and Kello. It's positive goalkeeping. McGinn. Fox. Hearing only a couple of minutes to be added on to the 90. He's at McGeady. Could he come close to getting hold of it? Well, Shabalazlo checking his watch. Well, the cat, the, are almost there. You know, I thought it was 30 seconds a substitute, and there's been there's been six substitutes, so it has to be. I, I would think at, at least three minutes. Some of some some officials going to tell me different. I think Tony Mowbray is asking the same question. I'm sure so, he is. Six subs. Time half a minute each makes three minutes. I've not got a calculator with me, but I might be wrong. Maddy arriving in agony here. There's been a couple of instances. I, I would have thought probably three men, arguably four minutes, but uh, anyway, what I will say, it's been a, been a cracking second half. It's been lively, there's been bookings, there's been incident, goals. And from Hart's point of view, the, the fans are on their feet just in front of us there. Possibly going to see an excellent win for the side. Templeton set up that goal, scored by Ismail Bouzid. Shuffled by Thompson. He's trying to hem it in beside the corner flag. And Celtic will be afforded one final chance to get the ball forward. Shabalazlo pacing around in the technical area. What a boost this would be to the men wearing maroon. Samaras, time is of the essence now for Celtic. We are almost at the two-minute mark in added time. It was blocked by Kuharski. Fox. 
lifted on by Lugans. Anywhere will do. The Wallace with the clearance. Shiver Laszlo celebrates. It's a massive victory for Heart of Midlothian. Twice now this season. They have defeated Celtic a couple of months ago in the League Cup and now in the SPL. Ismail Bouzid with the goal that mattered. Michael Stewart had levelled the contest on the spot. Gary Caldwell sent off. Before that, Giorgio Samaras had put Celtic in front. Now well, Celtic stay four points behind Rangers, but really this is all about the home side. Hearts have defeated Celtic, even Tycastle, by two goals to one. Celtic have handed Rangers a clear advantage in the SPL title race. Hearts are beating again. A victory over Celtic might be a turning point in their season. Rangers lead Celtic by four points. Same games played. Look at Hibbs, just a point behind Celtic now. Uh, Hearts in seventh place, putting a little bit of distance between themselves and the bottom of the table. Thanks to Derek Ray and Craig Burley. You'll add their opinions on the, the post-match discussion that's on the way. So, with the final whistle having gone at Tynecastle, there's a whistle-stop tour of programmes on the way here on ESPN. Action from the Bundesliga match between Bayern Munich and Hertha Berlin is next, followed by the Cologne-Nuremberg match at 4.30. Talk of the Terrace at 6.30, followed by the Inter Milan-Lazio match. Defending champions into top of the table, Lazio 15th, too close to the relegation places for comfort. At 9.45, an extended interview with England manager Fabio Capello, World Cup hopes and heartaches, penalty shootouts, how you'll decide who gets picked for the England squad, all subjects that will be discussed. And at half past midnight, in high definition, ESPN's coverage of the NBA focuses on the Cleveland Cavaliers at the Dallas Mavericks. Hard two, Celtic won the final score. Celtic got a Christmas card they really didn't want. It might be a boozy afternoon at Tynecastle. Boxing Day on ESPN is a time for rejoicing, for reminiscing, a time... Hearts 2, Celtic 1. Celtic got to play for an hour with 10 men. Hearts Algerian defender Ismail Bouzid headed in a cracker to get the Jambos' hearts beating. And here's Daryl Curry, reaction from the hearts dressing room. Thanks very much, Ray. That's right, I'm with two delighted players, both goal scorers today. Ismail, I'll start with you. Just talk me through that moment when you scored the winner. Yeah, I'm very happy today because uh, it's my first goal here uh, with the uh, Art of Middlesbrough. But... You know, I am very happy because I know if you if you can uh, show what you can uh, play, it's very good for the team because we show we have the possibility to come back in the league and you have a good squad, you know, and for this I am very, very happy today. You had to ride your luck for a bit as well, didn't you? Celtic had a lot of chances. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, it's, this is the football, you know, we won 2-1 two, two and uh, for this we are very, very happy. You know, we don't take any goal in the second half and it's very good, you know, I'm very happy. Michael, that's two penalties you've scored against Celtic this season now, but how big a result was that for you today? It was massive, um, and what is important. Did you feel, though, before that penalty was awarded, when Celtic still had 11 men, that you could have gone on and won the game? Uh, you know, uh, this is a nice question, but this question nobody can answer. Uh, 10, 11, or 12, or 13 players in the field, this is not important. The important is that you must win against the opponent and actually which one he stay in the field. Two example, we stand with nine player in the field uh, against Hamilton and we had in the last situation also a big possibility to win and we don't go down and this is never, it's never uh, true that uh, 10 player he can't play football. This can give you uh, definitely to the referee then whether it's a red card or not and you know, fortunately for us he, he decided it was. Can you kick on now this season? Well, I mean, I think we've had quite a few false dawns already this season, but we've got to make sure that um, we go away to Falkirk next week and, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to try and get two wins on the bounce. And, and that, you know, if we do that, then we can start talking about those sort of things. Well, Ishmael is the Clydesdale Bank Premier League Man of the Match today. Michael, can I ask you to do the honours? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later. Thank you very much.
Uh, apologies if you're seeing, well, apologies for whatever you're seeing during that interview. Safe to say that the Hearts players are delighted having beaten Celtic by two goals to one. Uh, Conor Hendry and Scott Booth, how critical are we going to be of Celtic? Yes, they were a man down for an hour, but that's precious points that have been slipping away again. Same, pro same problem they've had all season, really. If they can't sort out the defensive partnership, central defensive partnership, from making elementary mistakes, then they ain't going to get very far. And that's fast. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a basic error. Gary Caldwell's taken the rap today for Leuven's mistake, to be fair. He, he should have latched on the ball far quicker, far sooner than let the ball bounce. But um, it's, a, it's a problem they've got. Is this back to the drawing board? Because we started off by saying Celtic uh, had found their feet, or they appeared to have found their yeah. feet. Rangers certainly have found their feet. Well, I mean, I, th I think it certainly is now advantage Rangers, but you've got to look at the, the, the factors in this match. Yeah, I think Celtic, for me, should have won this game. They've got plenty of chances, counted five in the second half, um, but they are responsible, responsible for their own downfall because defensively, again, there's uncertainty there. You saw that in the first half. And, you know, I think Hearts needed the advantage today. They needed a spur from somewhere and they got it with the sending off and the penalty. Well, let's look at the winning goal. Cracking delivery, fantastic header. Ray, the one, the one for me moment of real quality from David Templeton there yeah. um, that Hearts gave in the match. Um, Hearts, they, they worked away, you know, in the first ten minutes to try to close Celtic down. That was their, obviously their game plan, to try and stop Celtic. But as I said, they needed to have mm. a spur. And it was the one time yeah. that they, they actually got someone on the ball to, to deliver. Um, and they, what a cross. And they I put think, it in a great area. Yeah, it was a great ball. Well. Was, I mean, if he'd missed, he'd have been calling him. But they didn't have a great... There wasn't a great nous from, from Hearts as to taking or exploiting the situation that they were in, Celtic down to ten men. The game was running away, really, because we were saying, this is going to end up a draw. Mm. This could end up a draw quite easily. Hearts would be happy. Celtic would probably be happy. And, of course, when you had a little bit of quality, the very good bit of quality changes uh, the game. Celtic fans will be remarking now that even with ten men, there was a succession of chances uh, I mean, that they could have got something from this game. Absolutely, Ray, and, and that, that happened how many times in the game? But that was terrific for McGeady there. How, how many times did McGeady pick the ball up in this match, you know, 40, 50 yards out and run and be allowed to run? Scott McDonald here puts it on a plate Howler. for, for Samaras, should score. Um, and, you know, I, I just feel that when you, for, for Tony Mowbray, he'll be looking back at this game, he'll, he'll see three points have completely escaped him because I mean a, another on. great chance from Fortuna there um, even if he puts it back across the goal he score and um, you know cleared off the they're line they're, they're, they're plenty of chances you know we, we can't contest that I mean they were still, is, even with well the 10 men well. they were very on the offensive and I mean it's a great save from the goalkeeper here but I mean the chances they did have especially Samaras you know that ball's getting played back we did discuss possibly was the ball short was the pace in the ball not strong mm. enough all he needs to do is hit the target uh, let's hear from the Hearts manager, Shabba Laszlo. We think he'll be delighted about this win. So a very important three points for Hearts and Shabba Laszlo. You must be delighted. You needed that, didn't you? You, you, you tell, no, uh, just the three points is important. This is not important uh, who was the opponent in our situation. Uh, I think uh, uh, for us uh, today uh, afternoon was just uh, one. The three points, which one uh, is important. And uh, now the next game, uh, uh, you must forget, take the positives, talk about the negatives and go forward. What was your view of the penalty? Yeah. This was a penalty, but uh, I think before uh, I told always before I talk about situations, uh, I must see in the TV the pictures, and after I can give my comment. Uh, but I think uh, the team spirit uh, was uh, the most important today, and uh, that with uh, what I told the young guys, which one now come also through over the academy, uh, he felt that uh, also against uh, big teams like Celtic, uh, you can win and you can play success successful football if you do this, what I tell and what is important. Did you feel though before that penalty was awarded, when Celtic still had 11 men, that you could have gone on and won the game? Uh, you know, uh, this is a nice question, but this question nobody can answer. Uh, ten. 11 or 12 or 13 player in the field, this is not important. The important is that you must win against the opponent and actually which one is stay in the field. Two example, we stand with nine player in the field uh, against Hamilton and we had in the last situation also a big 
possibility to win and we don't go down and this is never is never uh, true that uh, 10 player he can't play football this can give you uh, definitely uh, extra power uh, extra spirit and if you use this clever uh, it is not uh, always the rule that the 11 player win against 10 we won also games in the last season with 10 uh, in the field and uh, i think uh, this is just a question sometime uh, uh, from uh, the tactical shape and uh, at the moment uh, if we talk about uh, uh, games. Uh, I think the league uh, uh, it is so long. You have so many games. You can't uh, uh, tell never that no. Uh, the point was that the Celtic uh, um, anti played with uh, ten guys. You see, even with ten guys, he had his chance and he played a good football. And then uh, I think uh, even for Celtic it was not easy to come to Tin Castle, especially last game he lost against Ants and he was no in Wien. Uh, this is uh, this is always the same, you know. Must be concentrated and then talk about just about what you can do and use it. Chaba, well done today, and I'm sure you'll have a good Christmas now. Uh, this Thank was a nice gift, but uh, the league is not finished. Thank you. <laughs> gift wrapped with a bow. <laughs> what do you make of Hearts? Could this be a turning point in their season now? You mentioned before the game they were mm -hmm. inexperienced, didn't look like they were going to get any goals, but surely this can be the springboard to greater things. Well, I think when you when you you know read or listen to what what Chab has got to say there, I don't know he goes on a little bit too too long, but um, he's talking about the young players and how happy he is for them coming in today. Did matter to him that it was against Celtic that he got the three points. The fact that they, they got three points, they looked much more like a team that were playing together, playing you know as a unit, and that's going to be really important for them. But they have to continue that way. They have to find consistency from somewhere. Nothing wrong with the spirit in the Hearts team, is there? No, not at all. And. I mean, just to emphasise what Scott had said, it's, it's important that they get the three points, not so much it's against Celtic. Obviously, it's a bearing in the, the league table at this minute, the top end, and the bottom, of course, with Hearts, but it's most important that they get three points. A big game away at Falkirk next week. They've got to follow the game up today, the result today, by performance there. Uh, other side of the coin, we'll be hearing from the Celtic manager, Tony Mowbray, in a few minutes' time. Celtic, well, they've presented their rivals' ranges with a clear advantage in the title race.